Good afternoon and welcome to today's Learn at Lunch webinar. Today we will hear from Dr. Hannah Shear as she discusses recent research concerning the economics of patch burning and grazing. You may ask questions using the chat window by clicking the chat button at the bottom of the screen to open the chat window. You also will be able to unmute yourselves to ask questions at the end of the webinar. Additional farm management resources are available on the eFarm Management page. I will share this link in the chat window. Dr. Shear, I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you, Brent. All right, before I jump in to today's topic of talking about kind of the dollars and cents behind the use of patch burning and grazing, I wanna give credit where credit is due on this, this research. Um, so before I give the credit where I think it needs to go, I'll just give a quick um, introduction of who I am and where I'm from. I think that kind of helps everyone's frame of reference, especially when we're in the virtual world. Um, so my name is Hannah Shear. I'm originally from Kentucky from a cow-calf uh, operation. Now we're highly diversified, but mainly cow-calf. Um, I did my undergraduate studies in both animal science and agricultural economics, so I'm extremely interested in, in both the physical production of our livestock animals as well as how that impacts our producer's bottom lines, which kind of will make sense with this topic that I'm talking about today. Um, here at Oklahoma State University, I serve as an assistant professor. Um, predominantly, my role is, is teaching, but I do have a research appointment as well, and that is where this project kind of comes into play, or at least how it got on my radar here at Oklahoma State. My research areas tend to be around farm and ranch management and livestock and agribusiness. Um, those are also kind of the courses I teach here at Oklahoma State as well. So I kind of get to do all three branches of teaching research and extension, which I really enjoy. What I am going to talk about for most of today was actually a project done um, by a graduate student of mine. Um, and also Dr. Peel, who probably most of you all know as our Oklahoma State Livestock Extension Specialist. Um, he co-advised Hannah Baker uh, with me on this project. Uh, she is now the Beef and Forage Extension Specialist at the University of Florida. Uh, so I wanna make sure I, I mention her here because this, this research was led by her, um, but it was led by her as a part of a larger project. So I, I'm relatively new, I've only been at Oklahoma State um, I'm in my third year now. So this project has been around for a while, the, the grant funding for this, it's, it was funneled through the Prairie Project and Dr. Peel, which is a part of a larger group um, of researchers. So I wanna make sure I mention a little bit of that here. I also wanna be sure to mention the real experts about patch burning and grazing and kind of our range and grassland management. Um, Experts, I'm I'm here to talk about the economics. Um, if you want to talk about real sciency uh, of the rangeland management, uh, these are going to be who you're going to want to talk to. So Sam Fuelendorf and Laura Goodman, who are both in the Oklahoma State's Natural Resource Ecology and Management Department, um, they're also huge uh, leaders on the Prairie Project and are are the experts in in the real grass rangeland management part. D, uh, Daryl Peel and I kind of just tag along here at the end to kind of talk about the economics portion of this. Um, so I'm happy to answer questions about the dollars and cents on it, but I do want to make sure I point you all to the right experts if you have questions. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Oklahoma first. So I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but I think it's important to frame things out correctly since I don't quite know the whole audience and who I'm talking to. So in theory, though, most of you all should know this. So Oklahoma, we have rangelands. Um, in the U.S., rangelands make up about 30% of U.S. land, mainly uh, along the Great Plains. Those Great Plains, that land, rangeland area, supports uh, approximately 50% of our beef cattle production. So that's extremely important. But there's a problem on these rangelands we're, we're running into, and that problem is what we call woody plant encroachment often abbreviated WPE. Uh, so we've got this woody plant encroachment problem. What else does Oklahoma have? Well, we also have cattle production. 
Uh, grazing of our livestock is the number one use of, of rangelands in Oklahoma. We have about 25 million acres of land that is classified as rangelands. Um, and obviously forages are important to cow-calf producers and backgrounders. So here you see I kind of have waffled back and forth between talking about just grazing, which grazing can be any species, but I'm talking specifically about cattle, but you're also maybe looking at this picture and being like, hey, lady, those are goats. Um, I purposely did this just so that I uh, could remember to mention that while this particular study was done on cow-calf uh, value economics, um, you can also use patch burning and grazing with other livestock, especially goats, who really do love um, some different types of species and things on the rangeland. So I am aware that those are not cows. Um, so we have rangelands, we have cattle production, um, and we also can't control the weather. So you put all of those things those things together with our woody plant encroachment problem, and we have an issue, which is how do we properly maintain our range and grasslands to support sustainable livestock production or specifically sustainable cow-calf producers. Our producers wanna maintain production and they wanna make profits. That is their motivation. That's kind of our base assumption. Um, and so while we can't control the weather, we can mitigate some of the impacts. So specifically what we're talking about here is utilizing patch burning and grazing as a, a risk management approach. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how utilizing uh, patch burning and grazing can help mitigate uh, the impact of drought. So that when a drought occurs, which we know they're going to, it's just a matter of when they do, we experienced a pretty bad one in 2011. We've had an interesting year this year, um, but when a drought strikes, our cattle producers have to make some decisions. So they might have to adjust stocking rates, which could include liquidating some of their herd it could increase the need for supplemental feed costs. Um, and those things can impact a producer's bottom line. So this is kind of the motivation where we're at. So patch burning and grazing. This is not a new concept. Um, when I first started looking into this, I'm like, well, I'm I'm confused. You know, I see some of the OSU publications. There, there's been research on OSU facilities since like 1993, I think I saw there were some research stations in Oklahoma that were doing research on patch burning. Um, so it's not a new concept. Um, prior herbivory, which is just the interaction of burning and grazing, so using both fire and animals to maintain the rangelands, not not a new concept. Patch burning is slightly more new um, compared to traditional burning. Um, but this has been around for a while. So I think some of the questions were like, all right, well, if it's been around for a while and the research shows that there's lots of benefits for this, so like high quality forages, drought mitigation, it helps reduce the woody plant encroachment uh, and wildfire control. You know, if you're maintaining your pastures better, there's less fuel for those wildfires. Um, so why, why isn't this a, why isn't patch burning and grazing just taken off, you know? Well, the bottom line is just in general, burning isn't necessarily taken off. Um, there's a lot of fear associated with, with burning and the liability that comes with that and also just costs of traditional burning. So if they're already kind of a barrier to adopting traditional burning, there's going to be an additional barrier to then even convince those traditional burn producers to maybe also consider patch burning and grazing. So one of the uh, objects of this research was also to kind of talk about um, what is patch burning, just kind of raise awareness. And one of those ways we can get producers kind of on board is showing them how the economics uh, might impact um, them. For people who are unfamiliar with any sort of burning and grazing and traditional burning versus patch burning, this uh, was just a real simple graphic. Uh, so traditional burning there on the right, you burn the whole pasture. You've decided you're going to burn, you burn the whole pasture. Whereas in pasture burning, uh, patch burning, you take your whole pasture, you divide it into patches, and then you, in fact, only burn a patch. Uh, so gray indicates our burning here. Uh, this is a real world clip from one of OSU's fact sheets that shows how would this look like on actual land. Like not everybody's farm is perfectly quad, uh, 
organized like that. So here's an example of how someone might divide a pasture for patch burning. They're using natural barriers and or already pre-existing barriers to help make this um, more feasible. Some of those particular uh, facets are they're using the road, they're using natural drains or creeks to help divide the areas. That also helps decrease costs because then you don't have to worry about um, creating kind of like fire breaks. So that is what patch burning looks like visually. So we wanted to look at what is the economic impact of patch burning and grazing. So you're going to see that abbreviated PB and G. Uh, so we had a couple steps. We wanted to first estimate the cost of burning. We wanted to quantify the qualitative benefits for patch burning for our cow-calf producers. And then we wanted to compare uh, patch burning and traditional. So step one, we had to estimate the burn costs. Uh, we used a 2021 survey about the cost of prescribed burn burning. We did not do this survey, uh, but we took the, the data and we had to kind of make some assumptions because the survey wasn't specifically aimed at uh, patch burning versus traditional, but based on the survey responses, we, we were able to sort the producers as either doing some form of patch burning or traditional. So we did these kind of comparisons of the costs from these from the producers reporting. So obviously here you can see patch burning on a cost per acre was more expensive than traditional burning, which is to be expected if you're considering, ah, you know, we're, with traditional burn, you just start and burn the whole thing. Whereas with patch burning, um, you're having to probably have a few more fire breaks. There might be increased labor, those types of things. So cost per acre. Uh, for the burning cost is higher for our patch burning producers, which is why a lot of people are probably hesitant to adopt patch burning. Okay, so patch burning costs on average $2.77 more than traditional burning, but this is only in uh, year one. So this is only burning one patch. So here you're comparing burning one patch to the traditional burn of burning the whole pasture. It's expected that the burning costs would go down in years two and three for the patch burning because you can burn kind of back into the, the patch you already burned. So fire, fire break construction costs for patch burning decrease in years two and three. So this table that you're just looking at is just year one's cost comparison. But as economists, you know, we like to look at things over time. So when you look at years two and three, the costs do decrease over time. So the, the cost for fuel reduces in years two and three and labor reduces in years two and three for our patch burning um, users. So there is a per acre difference then of $2.40 per acre over those over time. The second step we needed to do was we needed to estimate feed costs. So we had to do a little bit of hodgepodge here, which is economists favorite uh, thing to do. Um, we took two studies from OSU uh, projects that were done. One was on OSU's range research station in Tallgrass Prairie. Um, and we took their, the data from those studies and we had to make some broad assumptions. But basically um, from those two studies, we made the conclusion that cows on patch burning pastures only required 90 days of feed versus cows of, for traditional burn pastures required 150 days of supplemental feed. So we can argue about how accurate that is, and we should probably just have a whole new study if we wanted to, but money doesn't grow on trees, so we can't. So this is the best we could do. So we take those numbers, um, and the study, one of the particular studies was done with a number of head of eight. Um, so this is eight cow-calf pairs, so we didn't just randomly pick that number. That's what the study was. So we've tried to keep things um, along, follow those two studies when we are estimating our feed costs. So when you break this down, feed costs per head for year one uh, for traditional burning is $444, whereas patch burning and grazing is $266. So on average, that's a $20 per head per year savings on feed if you utilize patch burning. So if you remember the number previously for that per acre difference, um, Patch burning has now quickly overtaken traditional burning as being the more affordable um, burning method. So here is a bar chart just showing you the combined burn and feeding costs. You see patch burning is now cheaper than if our producers are utilizing traditional burn 
only when including those burning and feed costs. Okay, well, that's great. Now what happens when there's a drought though? So the step three of our study, we wanted to look at how this might impact in drought years. So we went and grabbed some drought data um, and you have to kind of do these things as a scenario because we didn't have continuous data. Um, so we used historical examples of when there was a drought and those forages in those years. And that's how we made these, these sort of scenario simula simulations. So we had five different scenarios and each scenario we're comparing traditional burning to patch burning. Um, so these are, that's why we had to have five um, different scenarios. The other thing was if you burn two patches in that year versus if you were to burn one patch that year. Um, and that's what the flexibility of patch burning offers you. If you burn your first batch, first patch, and then it turns out there's a drought, you can just select to not burn the second patch. So that's maybe what happened here in scenario two. Whereas here in scenario one, you see they burned two patches, which meant it was probably not a drought year. So the, the producer decided to go ahead and burn two patches. So we utilized um, those, those previous studies that I mentioned and had to estimate the number of days that those cow-calf pairs could rely on stockpiled forage. Those were um, pulled out of those, those Lawman and Richards and Lim are, um, articles. So let's look at this over a six-year impact. Why do we choose six years? Well, we're assuming that um, the pasture has been divided into six patches. So we just want to make sure we're, we're comparing apples to apples. So we divided over time here for six years. So in this particular six-year scenario, we've fake implemented or uh, simulated a drought in year four. So for scenario four, which is where the traditional burner decide decided not to burn, but the patch burner had already burned one patch. Uh, you see there that those six-year costs compared traditional to patch burning, um, traditional burning was, was more expensive than patch burning. For scenario five, with the drought occurring in year four, both chose not to burn. Um, and you see that their patch burning, again, is still um, cheaper overall across six years than traditional burn. So you have average savings of about $28 a year or $3.50 per head per year. And all of this is done because all of these average savings is basically because of that reduced reliance on supplemental feed because you utilized patch burning and grazing. Because we're economists, we like to try to project this stuff um, forward and make sure people under, you know, understand the fancy dollars uh, projected over time. So we just use net present value. Um, the way we did this net present value though, is it's calculated based on the savings. Usually net present value is if I put an investment, if I save money and put it in an account, but we're just doing it off the of savings. So here we're comparing the savings that patch burning and grazing versus traditional burning gives you. Um, and you see over six years, if there's no doubt, uh, or if there's no drought, patch burning um, gives you net present value of 135. Dollars and no drought uh, with one patch burn um, gives you a patch burning net present value of 93. And then a six year drought with no burn for either um, patch burning gives the producer $113 of a net present value. Positive numbers are good here. That's that's saying that they saved that, that money this year. So patch burning and grazing provides not only the potential flexibility, but also helps producers maintain cattle production and reduces costs during those drought years. So basically what was a larger master's thesis, we've cond condensed down here into a quick 20 minute presentation. Um, so I did not cover all of the different scenarios and walk you through all of those. Um, instead, I'm just gonna give you the, the summary here, the gist of all of them. Burning two patches a year results in a decrease in winter feed costs by approximately $20 per head per year. It also leads to a decrease, a 10% decrease in burning and feed costs when using patch burning and grazing after three years. And it offers a future value savings of $130 after six. Utilizing patch burning before and after a drought while deciding to skip burning during a drought year, that's that flexibility, uh, shows 
to be the most economical option. Why? That provides at least five additional days of grazing, reducing costs by $17, uh, future value savings of $113 after six years. All of this is just results that are showing the cost minimizing options to help our agricultural cattle producers um, manage their rangelands a little better possibly. So that was a lot in 20 minutes. Um, so I guess I think Brent said we'll open the chat and or you guys can unmute yourselves and ask a question. Thank you, Hannah. Yes, I just said it where people can unmute themselves and ask questions. And I shared a link, the link to the survey that um, Dr. Shearer mentioned in the chat box as well. So we are monitoring the chat box. You can ask questions that way or by unmuting yourself. Hannah, I don't know if you see this or not, but the first question is if money did grow on trees, what follow-up research would you like to see? Yes, I love that question. Thank you. I think I can see that. Thank you, Roger, for asking that. So I, I as an economist, sometimes we're tacked on to, to research and study kind of at the last minute. Uh, and so I would like to see some of the studies that we utilized uh, for our economic analysis. We would have loved to have been included from, from day one in that we could collect that forage impact, the rainfall on that specific location. Um, if we could have those forage points, we would know, you know, the, and if we had the cattle data as well for the, that poundage, you know, their forage to gain, um, we would love to do that, repeat this whole thing again. Um, but I'm not sure it's necessary because we were able to piecemeal some of this together, but I do think, um, if money did grow on trees, it, we'd love to kind of go back and, and collect data, um, on that. I also would love to redo uh, that NRAM survey that they did about um, prescribed burning and, and target it specifically at producers with their, their traditional burning cost versus uh, patch burning and that type of thing. Are there any other questions? Um, you're welcome. Feel free to ask them. I will say our next webinar is scheduled for Tuesday, September 26th at noon. And we will hear from Dr. Matt Brosey and he will discuss managing farm stress. So that will be Tuesday, September 22nd at, or 26th, I'm sorry, at noon. Uh, we hope you can join us then. We appreciate everyone joining us here today. Thank you, Dr. Shear, for presenting. Um, I guess we will wrap it up. Oh, uh, to answer the question, will a recording of this webinar be available? Yes, it will be available on the uh, AggieCon YouTube page, and I will email it, send it out on our email, um, email list, and it will also be available on the OSU Farm Management Facebook page and Twitter as well. So, um, yes, the recording will be available. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we will see, hopefully, everyone on September 26th. So until then, goodbye. <laughs>